Hello everyone, welcome to week four of HSCI 6262. For this week, uh, we've, we have three major topic areas, really focus on uh, idea generation and the various factors that impact uh, ideas for research. So uh, the objectives for this week are uh, to tell you about Deliverable A and then to talk about the role of, of the community and uh, also um, uh, the priorities of NIH and then how uh, policy plays a role in the development research ideas. So for Deliverable A, uh, the, we've, we've listed the various components of Deliverable sorry, Deliverable 1A, we listed the various components in the syllabus and also in the assignment section of the course. Um, I suggest that all of you use the hyperlink that we've provided in order to take a look at, um, <coughs> sorry, I have a cold here, in order to take a look at some suggestions on how to best write specific aims and a significance section. Uh, one thing that we are really stressing for this significant section for this course is that you include a community health needs assessment. So regardless of who your community is, uh, you need to delve uh, into, sorry, you need to really work on figuring out, you know, what are their needs and how do those relate to the research project you're developing. And, and pay attention to what their needs truly are because perhaps your research project needs modifying or you need to come up with a different idea based on the existing needs of the uh, community that you're addressing. Then you should identify a, um, a community partner. This can be an organization, it can be an individual, um, uh, just someone who is uh, going to be connected or going to be one of the end users of the the research that you're developing okay and so here are descriptions of what you need for each page this is all in the uh, in the assignment section so this is nothing new here um, just um, you know quickly just showing it to you again so it's about four pages um, you know you need to give us your funding source make sure you give us a hyperlink to the funding source on uh, page one on uh, page two uh, make sure you you keep your specific aims to one page. Uh, that's a limitation that uh, most researchers try to use. The, the specific aims should really tell me all about your research. Uh, and I should be able to get a, a, a good idea of what you're uh, thinking about doing and what you're going to attempt uh, just by reading that one page. And, and in fact, <clears throat> sorry, uh, when your grant is, uh, when your grant proposal is being reviewed, often people will only look at the specific aims. So uh, this is by far the brain, uh, the soul of your proposal. And so you have to make sure these specific aims convey as much information as possible uh, to the readers of them. And so you're going to draft these, and then we're going to ask you to work on them again. Uh, and that's really typical for specific aims. To, many times we'll um, edit specific aims and rewrite them, you know, 20, 30 times in order to get them to the point that they are uh, representative of what the individual wants to do with their project. Okay, I just want to remind you of the um, the the diagram of the health innovation life cycle that we have in the syllabus. Clearly, the last three weeks you spent on assessment of need, and now we're moving to idea generation. All right, <clears throat> so just as a reminder, necessity is the mother of invention, really all invention, right? So when you're um, when you're you know on awards or or, or um, you know on your job wherever you work, uh, spend some time just thinking about you know what what are the needs around me, uh, what are the problems that I'm seeing that need to be addressed, what are people complaining about over and over again that uh, that that is just not being addressed, you know how is there some way that that you can innovate. Uh, is there something that can be created? Is there some research project to assess you know, what is the best approach for addressing that problem? Just, just think in a, in, a, in a creative way. Let the needs drive uh, your invention. As researchers, to really figure out what is the best way um, to uh, dole out this money and uh, appropriate it to people in a way that actually will lead to the best return on investment for the public. 
Now, as, as the report demonstrates, there's a diverse group of uh, people and factors that go into setting the priorities. And these people are essentially, you know, pushing for what their needs are. Um, there, there's definitely no shortage of people who are coming to Washington, emailing or, or emailing and calling uh, their representatives, telling them what their needs are, right? Uh, plenty of people are doing that. Plenty of groups are doing that. So, <coughs> sorry. So, these people, you know, really uh, create uh, the needs that drive this entire process. And politics, of course, uh, the, the, really the need for politicians to keep their jobs and uh, their various ideologies uh, makes this process even more complex and confusing at times. As many of you know, uh, politics has definitely uh, impacted research in, in a number of ways um, uh, for decades. All right, so just a few uh, themes from the IOM Rex uh, in this report uh, that I want to point out. One is just that uh, community engagement is really at the center of what the IOM is trying to say to NIH. They're saying, look, you know, again, focus on the public needs, focus on the community engagement, get out there and figure out how we can address what. Uh, you know what what people are suffering from uh, you know what 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 challenges they're facing figure out what needs to be done for them right you serve the public this is this is public money make sure that your research is getting out to those individuals um, they even suggest each institute setting up an office of public liaison really a person who is receiving that feedback on a regular basis you know is the research from the National Cancer Institute doing anything for uh, the various communities out there uh, that are uh, suffering from different types of uh, cancers or not, right? Okay, the IOM also suggests an open and transparent process, which the NIH has really been working on. Multi-year strategic planning. Now you see those in every institute. Those in USA exist, and they, they're really, they, they were created as a result of this report. And also, you know, the uh, IOM is saying, look, NIH, you need to do a better job balancing your desire to chase various interesting questions that, are, that scientists like to do, of course, um, with the disease burden of the society. So again, the, the community needs. And uh, that includes uh, the cost burden, you know, what's, what's costing our, our uh, society uh, more uh, than, than other diseases. What's, what's, what are we really spending money on, right? Let's take a look at that and let's make sure we engage in research that addresses those burdens. So when you talk about your community needs in your, um, in your first assignment, it, if you can find some cost-related data, that would be great, right? That would really help drive home uh, the needs that you're talking about. And that's always useful when you're writing a grant proposal to put that kind of information in there because it really helps people appreciate just how important a particular problem is. All right. Uh, and then the IOM also says that the NIH needs to use their uh, current data better. And now if you go online, you'll see that they today are really doing a good job of providing all their funding data to the public. Um, you know, they, they show how it's coming, how it's focused on certain diseases and how it's, uh, how much money each institute is getting and so on. And there's uh, lots of great info there. And if you haven't seen that, uh, go, go to the NIH website and take a look at it. And then finally, the IOM suggests that Congress should be more actively involved. And <clears throat> the IOM goes through the various criteria that are used for priority setting at NIH. And, and as you can see, and as you will see uh, when you get a chance to do the reading, uh, is that public health needs really drive everything. Uh, and this is much more than the medical model. So this is really focused on you know, prevention, health maintenance, uh, uh, and, and, and not just people going to get treatment from doctors, right, and, and getting a, a drug. Uh, this is focused on wellness, right? So what are the public health needs in, you know, just in general and uh, not within healthcare alone, all right? Uh, the scientific quality of the research clearly has always been uh, a way that NIH established priorities. If, if your research is not uh, up to snuff, doesn't uh, pass peer review, then you're not going to get funded, right? 
Um, so the potential for scientific process, uh, progress, sorry, uh, NIH wants innovation. Uh, they want diversity. So they want, you know, ag again, innovation uh, in many ways addresses the diversity question because if you're innovating, you're creating different ideas and that allows NIH ha to have a broad portfolio of things going on. Uh, and they think if they do that, just like investing, uh, you're going to potentially uh, end up with some hits. You know, science is difficult. You never quite know what's going to work out there. And you never quite know what's going to uh, be the most useful for uh, for consumers and patients. Uh, so you have to try lots of different things and see what sticks. And then finally, NIH wants to make sure there's infrastructure there to support whatever you're doing. If the infrastructure isn't available for your idea, then it really doesn't make sense for them to fund it, right? Uh, the NIH director has some role in the priority, priority setting process. As you can see, he's, the NIH director is really the face of, uh, the, of the National Institutes of Health. And the director testifies in front of Congress and uh, really tries to persuade them uh, to, to understand the importance of NIH and understand why NIH might need more funding for certain efforts um, in the future in order to address uh, evolving scientific needs. Uh, you can see in the uh, report I gave you by Francis Collins that he actually talks about NCATS, which is the center that um, manages the CTSA grants, which is the reason we have this course and the reason I'm sitting here talking right now uh, and the reason you're listening to this. So um, he was talking about you in that budget and he's, you know, he talks about the need to really uh, develop researchers uh, who are focused on translating um, uh, clinical research into clinical practice, into industry um, um, innovations. So, so that uh, a, a big part of that uh, testimony was about you guys. All right, um, I want to talk briefly about some some interesting things that are going on uh, that can impact the uh, generation of ideas for projects, and, and also just innovation generally. So one is crowdsourcing. Uh, there's a book here called The Wisdom of Crowds. If you have any free time at all, it's a, it's a good one to read, perhaps on a vacation, on a plane, or so on. Uh, we know crowds, when they're diverse and when they're representative of the people uh, in a nation or in any given type of region, uh, that the uh, crowd can actually provide really good advice. And so I, I gave you one idea. Uh, or sorry, one approach to this um, with the crowdoutaids.org website where you've got uh, youth who are commenting on different ideas of how to uh, prevent the spread of AIDS uh, uh, among uh, young people. And, you know, they're commenting and providing ideas and tips. And uh, the, the tools we have today, uh, the social networking tools we have, allow you to do that. And I suggest, you know, you think about ways to use these new tools. Don't, don't, um, don't, don't run away from uh, the innovation that's going on in other sectors. Uh, think, always think about how you can use them for whatever you're doing, uh, because that's going to keep you on the cutting edge. You know, you might think about, well, you know, is there some app I can develop for what I'm doing, or is there some way I can incorporate, you know, texting, or, 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 or is there some way I can bring in Facebook or whatever comes after Facebook, you know, and so on. So always, always be on the lookout for innovation in other sectors and think about how it applies uh, to your sector. Okay. Sentiment analysis is another way to get a sense of how crowds are thinking. Take a look at uh, the Twitter sentiment analysis. You can just go to this website, type in anything, type in something like, you know, New York Giants, and uh, you'll get a sense of how people feel about them. I'm sure some will like, some will hate, uh, because uh, not everyone was cheering for them uh, as they won a the Super Bowl. All right. <clears throat> Medical Device Innovation, uh, Innovation Initiative at FDA is one of the many efforts uh, that are going on at FDA to stimulate innovation. Uh, many of you think of FDA as the uh, regulatory body that determines the safety and effectiveness of drugs and devices and so on. But FDA also uh, has an innovation role. They, they are tasked by Congress to help stimulate innovation uh, in the industries that they regulate, believe it or not. 
And so they're trying to do a better job at that. Uh, so this is one one example of a plan that they have to improve innovation to, to really speed up this process of developing devices. Finally, um, I've provided you guys with an RFI for building a bioeconomy just to give you some sense of uh, here's, here's one way that uh, communities and experts can submit their ideas to government and actually influence what the priorities are uh, for our country, at least uh, coming from government. Um, <clears throat> the private sector doesn't do this kind of thing as much, uh, but they do market research. And from my perspective, you know, community needs assessments, crowdsourcing, all this kind of stuff uh, is essentially market research. And so that's that's all we're doing. We're, we're going out, we're assessing the market for whatever it is we're trying to create uh, and trying to provide to people. And we're trying to make sure that it makes sense in, in the context of whoever we're creating uh, the, the new device or drug for, right? So it's really market research. And that's what government does all the time when they puts out, when they, sorry, when they put out these RFIs, um, <clears throat> trying to uh, figure out what people think about a particular issue. How should they best address something? How, how should they uh, improve the way that they stimulate innovation? In this case, there's a current RFI on the diversity of the biomedical work workforce. So how can they really improve their efforts to increase the diversity of the biomedical workforce? All right, so uh, last slide here is all about optional reading. And those who are football fans will appreciate the notion of the option and again uh, Alabama uh, winning uh, the NCAA uh, or sorry the BCS uh, title alright uh, so just remember you can't do it alone just like a football team you've got to get out there and uh, develop a team of people if you want to get anything significant done uh, think of your brain as a battery Napoleon Hill in Thinking Grow Rich talked about this notion that um, people's brains are batteries and if they put them together with other brains essentially they, they create more energy more power uh, and they can get more done right uh, so always look around for good people who can join your team and be part of whatever kind of research you're doing uh, pay attention to your colleagues out there who are doing similar types of research as you think about ways to collaborate with them think about ways to compete with them uh, many times the competition can stimulate innovation right so Here's one example of how uh, uh, Seattle is bringing together various types of community partners uh, to <clears throat> pitch ideas to one another and uh, work on innovating. Uh, and you see a lot of this kind of thing um, going on uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, on, in the West Coast. Where there's just, you know, people really have an innovation mindset. And the East Coast is a bit... A little, is doing that, but is a little is a little slower to engage in that kind of thinking. Uh, but we're starting to do more of it, and I think it's mainly because we're learning from our East Coast um, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, then finally, just think innovatively. You know, so when you're trying to come up with ideas for projects, when you're trying to improve upon something, just think innovatively. I gave you a book on how breakthroughs happen. Uh, again, that's a you know useful book. If you have time to read it, you get some sense of well, you know, how do people innovate? What is this all about? People use this word over and over again. What does it mean? Uh, what's the process for doing it? Um, and that that book can give you a little bit of guidance in that area. Okay, uh, everyone have a good week, and we look forward to getting uh, a 